Glow is essentially a brand new incentive mechanism called a recursive subsidy, where Glow requires solar farms to contribute 100% of their electricity revenue to the rewards pool in exchange for the subsidies that are paid out by Glow. Today, we're discussing Glow, who is deploying nearly 10 new solar farms every week from Nevada to Florida. I'm thrilled to have CEO and co-founder David Vorick here with us, who has spearheaded the GLOW ecosystem, revolutionizing the solar industry through deep end technology. David, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing great. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Welcome to the Builder Series, where we spotlight visionaries transforming technology and innovation with USDC and the Circle Developer Platform. So David, you know, you're not new to this space at all. Uh, I read somewhere that you were mining Bitcoin back in 2012. I'm, I'm curious to learn about your journey and how that early experience uh, really influenced your vision for Glow Labs and the whole renewable energy sector. Yeah, so Glow was inspired by Bitcoin and the mining program that Bitcoin uses. So Bitcoin rewards Bitcoin miners or mining data centers with tokens based on how much hash rate they produce. Um, and if you look, this has produced the like most insane, intense competition probably on the planet. People work extremely hard to save a quarter of a percent of efficiency and they do it across the entire stack. Um, and so people get very creative and the just Bitcoin technology, if you were to hand, you know, like a, a 2014 Bitcoin miner to like a 2012 Intel engineer, they would think they were looking at alien technology. Um, just like very quickly, Bitcoin went in this crazy optimized direction um, that was just focused on, you know, hashing as much as possible, as cheaply as possible. And the incentive model was repeated. Um, you had like Litecoin and other compute coins. But then when it came to things like Filecoin and Chia and HiveMapper and Helium, um, this incentive model of just using token inflation to... Uh, deliver some specific objective proved over and over again that it would just create this firestorm of optimization and rollout um, and that people would roll out an enormous amount of highly optimized infrastructure in chase of a token reward um, and so our thought at glow was well this model seems to work very well to produce lots of stuff most of that stuff is bad for the planet what if we use the model to produce lots of stuff that's good for the planet? Um, and that was kind of the the genesis idea. It was like, people want more solar. Um, and, you know, Paul Graham at Y Combinator is always saying, build something people want. And it seemed obvious to me that people feel good and want to support projects that install solar all over the world. And so we we're like, we can do a token that installs more solar than anyone else on the planet. And uh, that's where we started. You know, I was going through some of your uh, some of the docs and, and, and information out there. And, you know, I, I got something where you said maintaining uh, harmony with nature is a big theme in your work. What does that concept mean for Glow Labs and, and I guess practical terms? Yeah. So I think that a lot of people look at technology and I, I consider myself a technologist um, and an accelerationist. And I'm like very bullish on the future of humanity. I'm very confident that we have a bright future. And, and a lot of people think that technology and nature are at odds with each other. Like the problem is not technology itself. The problem is that technology has historically been developed in a way that is not using nature as a like focal point or constraint or really, like as a concern. And instead, uh, all we need to do is make it so that when we build technology and when we power up humanity, we do it in a way that's considerate of nature and is thinking about sustainability and the future. And so that's exactly what solar is, right? So today, 40% of global CO2 emissions come from creating electricity. And the problem is not that humans are using too much electricity. The problem is that the way we create electricity is harmful to nature. If you use solar panels instead, especially if you pair those solar panels with a recycling program, then you can reduce the emissions created by solar panels anywhere from like 95 to 99% um, compared wow. to coal and natural gas. So, and so that's where Glow is saying we can have technology and harmony with nature too. We don't have to stop humanity or curtail humanity or reduce the population 
to take care of the world around us. You know, you described GLOW's protocol as addressing a fundamental challenge in targeting subsidies. Can you elaborate how your approach ensures that, I guess, the renewable energy capacity is built where it has the most climate impact, if that makes sense? Yeah, so there's this big challenge in the carbon credit space that where there are lots of people like like a trillion dollars a year being spent on reducing carbon emissions worldwide. And when it comes to renewable energy, around 2018, there was a paradigm shift where renewable energy went from not profitable to profitable. Mm -hmm. And that paradigm shift meant that after 2018, a lot of the subsidies that are given to renewable energy programs are just lining the pockets of people who would build solar farms anyway because those solar farms would make money anyway. And so it feels very wasteful to someone who's you know spending their hard earned, like if you donate $1,000 to a carbon credit program and then you find out that $1,000 ended up in the pocket of a solar farm owner who also owns a yacht, you don't feel <laughs> great about having spent that $1,000. You're like, wait, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be changing the world. This guy seems like he's doing just fine. Why does he need my thousand bucks? And so what GLOW does is it very carefully steers that $1,000 towards solar projects. GLOW is essentially a brand new incentive mechanism called a recursive subsidy, where GLOW requires solar farms to contribute 100% of their electricity revenue to the rewards pool in exchange for the subsidies that are paid out by GLOW. Hey, look, I want to thank each and every single one of you builders for taking the time to watch this video. And as a special thank you, I'm offering $100 in credits towards Circle's developer services. That's right. Sign up today at circle.com forward slash build. That's B-U-I-L-D to automatically receive yours. How far can that go? Well, look, that's enough for about one month of managing 2,000 active wallets, or it could go towards 200,000 smart contract platform API calls, or you know what? You can even use those to sponsor network fees. Make sure to go ahead and sign up right now. That's circle.com forward slash build to receive your $100 in credits now. You know, so I was going over something and it, it was the self-selecting mechanism. Can you describe, how does, how does, what is that exactly? How does that work? How does that work? Glow uses something called a recursive competitive subsidy. Um, and so we already talked about the recursive part, which is that right. uh, solar farms have to contribute their revenue to the rewards pool. And like another way to think about that, Glow, Glow can be thought of like a company or a project that has donated money to it. It uses that money to construct a solar farm then that solar farm uses all of its electricity revenue to construct another solar farm, and so on and so forth. And so that's the recursive part. The competitive part is the Bitcoin-style competition. So what Glow does is it says there's $10 million available for solar farms, and we will distribute that $10 million based on the amount of solar that gets built, or in, in this case, like the amount of carbon credits that get built. Competitors are essentially Bitcoin-style working against each other to bring the price down or to produce as much solar as possible. And that's going to dilute the rewards until the rewards are spread so thin that only the most efficient and most cost-effective solar farms possible are able to be constructed on GLOW. And so the recursive subsidy part, essentially, you know, it makes sure that, that the revenue is coming back. Any revenue that's earned by a solar farm constructed by GLOW comes back to GLOW and can be used for more solar farms. And the competitive part ensures that only the cheapest solar farms in the entire country are able to be built using GLOW subsidies because the more expensive farms just won't, they won't get enough money back because that money has been spread between too many solar farms. It's spread too thin for inefficient solar farms to uh, join. You mentioned Bitcoin a few times in the conversation and kind of the, the comparisons. And I remember in our first call together, you describe Glow as a virtual factory. Uh, can you explain and go a little bit deeper into uh, what that means and, and how it mirrors the, the Bitcoin mining model? Yeah, so uh, I've started to think Glow as a virtual factory that constructs real solar farms. And one way to look at it is like me and a couple of devs, we sat down, we wrote a bunch of code, and then solar farms started popping up all over the United States, which is just like, 
kind of crazy when you think about it. But in the same token, uh, you know, Bitcoin is also a virtual factory that constructs not solar farms, but mining data centers. Um, and so these incentive programs, they're like, they're moving bits and bytes around and they're just assigning tokens to people. But then people will do things in the real world to earn those tokens. Um, and so essentially Glow allows people to earn tokens by requiring them to construct solar. Um, and I think that's an important distinction about the Glow protocol. It's not, it's not a solar rewards program. So existing solar farms can't participate in Glow because the purpose of Glow is not to reward solar. The purpose of Glow is to construct brand new solar farms. Um, and so when we say it's a factory, we really mean it as opposed to calling Glow a rewards program. You talk about scalability, and, and one thing that uh, I hear a lot about right now is the impact of AI and streaming. And I mean, we are de we're definitely you know going into a world where it seems like the need for energy is increasing at a pace um, that I'm sure few could have anticipated. How do you feel that demand will either help the growth of Glow or potentially even, you know, hurt or, or, or create challenges to the growth of Glow. I'm sure curious about your feedback on that or your thoughts on that. Yeah, so I think Glow sees it as an opportunity. Um, and okay. essentially, you have two, two dueling forces at the same time. One is with the advent of AI and other recent technology, the demand for energy is going through the roof and massive, massive power plants and solar farms are being built that they don't offset the existing grid, they exist just to power AI data centers. Um, and it's, it's quite baffling to see the sheer amount of energy being put down. Um, and then the other force is that the world is saying, you know, at a political level, we don't want to see carbon emissions anymore. And so what does that mean? Well, that means that as these data centers go up and as they decide they want to use more electricity and they're willing to spend money producing more electricity, um, they have to go to a source where that electricity is clean. Um, and so if Glow is the biggest game in town, if Glow is the one place that you can get reliable, clean energy, then all these AI companies will come to Glow to get their energy. Um, and so es essentially Glow sees it as a challenge of like, Glow just has to grow fast enough that it's growing faster than AI. And I, I actually believe that that is going to be possible, um, and that Glow will, will be able to both accommodate all of the new demand for electricity, as well as backfill all of the old electricity that's being produced in a dirty way. And we will be able to make the whole world green while simultaneously doubling or quadrupling the world's electricity production. Um, and so emissions will go to zero and humanity will continue growing at a rapid rate. You know, as you look forward, you know, what is the goal of, of, of GLOW? The goal of GLOW, um, is it to build the, the largest network of solar farms around the world? Is it more than that? You know. Give us some insights into the uh, strategy moving forward. Yeah, so the Glow team believes that there's a clear shot from where Glow is today to genuinely eliminating all electricity-based carbon dioxide emissions around the entire globe. Um, and so there are a couple of steps. Glow is in the early step, which is the, the easiest part is just to eliminate all daytime emissions. And so step one, mm -hmm. If electricity is being produced in a part of the world that's being hit by the sun, um, that electricity is going to be solar-based, it's going to be clean. And then the second phase will be adding battery systems or some sort of energy storage to get people through the night on most nights. And then the third phase is that long-term, uh, you know, what, what if it's cloudy for five days in a row, which happens all over the world on a regular basis. Um, and so you need you need a plan to get through long, long periods of no sun as well. Um, and so, but we feel that each phase has both a tangible path, like a, like an easy path to being achieved. And also on the way to get there, it will produce enough revenue and value through selling carbon credits um, to fund itself. Um, and as we hit economies of scale, the costs of producing carbon credits will actually go down far enough that the current trillion dollars a year in spending that's happening will be enough to see glow all the way through that uh, to its end mission. For those that are listening and are kind of thinking to themselves, hey, you know what? 
this sounds like an opportunity for, for my my solar farm. I want to get involved. Um, what is the, the first step for them to take to uh, get some more information and, and maybe even sign up? Yeah. So uh, if you're looking for a website, hub.glow.org um, is a place where you can go and get connected to auditors. The other big place to just, if you want information, you're not, you're not sure you're ready to construct a solar farm just yet and you want to learn more, um, glow.org has a link to the Discord. Um, you should pop by the Discord and, and start asking questions. Um, and there are lots of people there who would be more than happy to help you out. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening. Um, continue to follow. We'll put all the information uh, for Glow in the description. Uh, take a look. Look into it. If you got questions, feedback, um, you want to, you have any questions or whatnot, definitely put it into the comments as well. We, we really appreciate those sort of, uh, commentary. So thank you all for, for listening in and, and thank you again for joining us. Take care. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the circle builder series. Check out the show notes for links to any resources mentioned in today's show. And if you enjoyed the show, please leave us a five-star review and hit subscribe. So you never miss an episode.